Hello, I'm Judy Human, the Special Advisor for International Disability Rights at the U.S. Department of State. One of the best aspects of my job is that I get to meet some truly courageous, innovative, and extraordinary people from all around the world who are strong disability rights advocates as well as strong advocates for all. I often hear stories of their achievements and successes, but unfortunately, I also hear stories of discrimination and violence. Studies have shown that 80% of disabled women fall victims to violence at least once during their lifetime. Our gender and disability combined set the stage for double discrimination. In too many countries, disabled people are seen as objects of charity or disdain or are hidden away and invisible. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is helping to change these views, but we must escalate our efforts because people's lives depend on this. Disabled girls and women, boys and men, are more vulnerable to violence. Because of limited mobility, communication barriers, lack of social supports, inaccessibility of services, and the inaccurate perception of be being weak, stupid, or asexual, women and girls with disabilities find themselves at a higher risk of violence and with fewer resources available to report and recover from horrific acts. Gender-based violence comes in many forms, from domestic violence, trafficking in persons, domestic servitude, female infanticide, elder abuse, to rape and sexual assault. For women with disabilities, sometimes this violence can also manifest in forced isolation, forced sterilization, or denial of basic necessities. Each of these forms of violence is a stain on our collective humanity, a barrier to peace and stability, and a call to action for us all. According to UN Women, violence against women causes more death and disability for women and girls between the ages of 15 and 44 than do cancer, traffic injuries, malaria, and war combined. Disabled women around the world are particularly vulnerable to gender-based violence, not only because of their frequent inability to defend themselves, but because of a lack of first responder, prosecution, and support services that are knowledgeable, willing, and able to serve women with disabilities. Violence against women, disabled and non-disabled alike, is unacceptable. Violence is not inevitable, and each of us can do something to stop it. We must, in all countries around the world, ensure that the issue of violence against disabled people is integrated into our overall agenda of ending violence. We must empower disabled women and girls to speak for themselves. We can wait no longer. It is all of our responsibilities. If we as a society continue to perpetuate the myth that disabled people are not sexual, or if we believe no one would harm a person because they have a disability, then we enable perpetrators to continue to feel that preying on disabled people will bring them no harm. I know this is not what most people around the world want. Don't just listen to me, though. Speak to disabled people's organizations and women's organizations in their communities to learn from them. Listen to their experiences and hear their stories. Together, we can make a difference. We are grateful to civil society for their role in ensuring that people with disabilities and gender equality was central to the Sustainable Development Goals. Now we must turn our attention to implementation. Partnership with other governments, private sector, and especially civil society will be critical to these efforts. Ultimately, gender-based violence will only end when women and girls, including disabled women and girls, are fully valued by society and able to fully participate. The United States is committed to promoting disability rights and to being a part of the global effort to prevent and respond to gender-based violence. But we can't do this alone. 
Only through collective action will violence against women be eliminated. Thank you very much.